Hi guys, it's Ben here, welcome to another video and we're getting towards that point in the season now where you start to hear some murmurs, some rumours about what Liverpool might get up to this summer. You start to hear some stories from abroad, from local journalists, everything's kind of gathering pace even though we've still got an important eight weeks or so of the season left and God knows how far we might go in the Champions League and we've still got a league campaign to wrap up. You can't help but start to look ahead to the summer, which areas we might strengthen and you know, with it being an international break, it's even more excuse to have a look at the rumours and see what might happen. So, the last few days we've heard contrasting reports about Timo Werner and today, uh, as James Pearce always seemed to do, the bad news was delivered, uh, suggesting that we will not be in for him this summer. Obviously, we are going to sign Naby Keita, his teammate from Leipzig, and reports in Germany over the weekend suggested that we might go for Timo Werner too. It's going to cost us around 90 million euros, I believe. Build with ones that were saying it was gathering momentum. And would it have made sense? Um, well, the, re the word seems to be that we w won't go in for any striker at all, that Rian Brewster, the youngster, the 17-year-old, is going to be fast-tracked to the first team, and he's going to be alongside Dominic Slanky, Danny Ings, and that's about it, really, in terms of providing competition for Roberto Firmino. Devo Carrigi will come back from Wolfsburg, Daniel Sturridge will come back from West Brom. Uh, you'd expect Sturridge to definitely be sold. Origi's only scored... Um, what is it? Let's have a look here. He's scored five goals for, for Wolfsburg, so it's unlikely, I think, that he's going to feature in Klopp's first team plans. Um, Dominic Solanke yeah, has a lot of faith put in him this season, he's, and he has featured when Firmino has been absent. You know, he started in uh, the Merseyside derby, he started away at Stoke, uh, started at Burnley, there's been one or two others as well. Um, so Solanke has had a few chances, and he does come off the bench uh, quite often, but he hasn't even scored a goal for Liverpool in competitive action. Danny Ings also comes off the bench fairly often, hasn't scored this season either. So you wouldn't say we're blessed with number nines. There are, you know, other options. You, you could put Salah up front, or um, maybe other, other other formations you could look at. But it is. Um, it, it's disappointing that we're not in for another top, top quality striker. Um, realistically, we're not going to displace Sorata Firmino, and I don't think we should. He, he has been sensational this season. I think it's been his best season on Merseyside. But, but we, I mean, you've got to... You've got to be looking at the bench and looking at options. You know, you look back at the United game the other week when we're looking at our bench and finding the likes of Slanky on there and having to throw him on, and he's not scored a goal for us. And even even uh, even wingers wise, we're not really blessed with uh, with goals off the bench, and that's been a problem with us for, for for a long time. Even in the season where we nearly won the league in 13-14, we were looking at the bench and there wasn't much there. You had you know Aspas, and even the 08-09 season when we had Torres and Gerrard, uh, you know, playing really well with each other. Outside of that, after Keane left, you're looking at like Nabil El Zar. Um, you know, Davin and Gog was around at that period. He was a backup to Torres for a while. So we've just not really had quality off the bench as far as number nines are concerned for a long time. Timo Werner would have been a big ask, I feel. Um, and let's not rule out going in for someone else. But you know what James Pearce is saying is that we won't go in for a striker. Um, you know, it, it, it isn't the area we most need depth, maybe. Um, you know, there are, there are some passable players there and perhaps we could do with a, another midfielder, which we'll get onto, and maybe some more wingers, because if Mane or Salah do get injured or uh, need a rest, which they will do, then there they're literally is nobody, really, um, unless you want to play Oxlade Chamberlain wide uh, or Lalana. But we, we, we really are lacking depth in, in the attacking positions. We're bet one of the best attacks in Europe, no doubt about it. Um, but once one of those three drops out, which they will do over the course of a long season when we're playing in Europe and you know fighting on on all fronts domestically, hopefully, uh, you know Timo Werner. If, you, if I just have a look at his stats here, 19 goals in all competitions for club and country this season. If you include Confederations Cup, uh, 11 in the Bundesliga from 21 starts, 25 appearances in total. So he is a one in two striker. He's only 22 years old. He is only getting better. He's been quite consistent for a few years in the Bundesliga. So he would have been a perfect fit, a perfect profile for Liverpool to go after. Obviously the Cater connection too. And I know that a lot of people uh, on social media and a lot of Liverpool fans that do watch the Bundesliga um, have been raving about him. Um, but it's not to be seemingly, so have to see how that plays out. It's interesting that um, he's being linked with a move away. I'm not sure who's interested in seeing whether other clubs are sniffing around him and just looking to build up uh, his agents, just looking to build up some hype. Maybe Bayern Munich are looking at him. They're obviously always looking to poach players from their rivals in Germany. So. Disappointing that we're getting completely shut down from this. Whether it means we're not going to sign a number nine at all, um, I don't think we will. Leave a comment with whether you think we should do that. 
Um, otherwise, other news today, Abdullah Decore of Watford um, has been speaking to Canal Plus, the French, I think is it French publication, um, a European publication, um, yeah, French media. He says it's a dream to make a move to Anfield. Now, this guy has obviously been very impressive for Watford this season. We saw him at Anfield not too long ago. Um, <laughs> He scored seven goals in the Premier League this season and two assists. That's pretty good going for a more de a defensive minded midfielder, really. Um, he's been eye catching. Um, probably one of the most you know surprise packages in the league this season. He's a Mali international, so it'll be another African player. Um, you know, we've got no shortage of those, and obviously Keita coming into the midfield as well. Um, so he was obviously asked about his hopes of moving to Liverpool. Uh, he says, Liverpool is a club that needs no introduction. I was impatient to play there at Anfield. I wanted to feel the atmosphere. For me, it would be a dream to play in a club like this. You rarely hear players so open about wanting to play for another club. Um, the core obviously scored against Liverpool on the opening day of the season in that 3-3 draw, which was uh, horrible to witness. Um, I'm grateful to Watford. I have the confidence of this club. It is the one who revealed me to the Premier League. If there's an offer, we will discuss to find the best solution. Everyone wants to play in the Champions League, the big competitions. Um, Interesting one. Uh, I'm not sure whether there is any interest. Obviously, the reports last week were that Wilfred and Didi was someone that Klopp was looking at, but I think the core has got a bit more about him. I think there's certainly more in product there. He's certainly got more quality on the ball. Whether he's as good defensively, I'm not so sure, but he can play in that defensive midfield, that number six role. And obviously, if Emre Chan is going to leave, you will want somebody else that can fill that position. And he's of that kind of versatile mould where he might be able to fill the six or the eight um, if we play two eights with Cater and someone else he might, he might be a good one to play alongside him especially in the bigger games away from home maybe where you need a bit more steel in there and a bit more physicality and Decore can provide that as well as going forward obviously providing that threat seven goals for a Watford side who are hardly you know uh, rampant going forward this season so that's another interesting one uh, vote for who you'd rather see Liverpool go for if they had to go for a defensive midfielder from uh, a Premier League side. Would you rather see Ndidi or Decore? I know there are obviously other options out there. Jorginho um, is, is, is there. But if we had to go for Decore or Ndidi, who would you prefer? Vote there for that. And that is pretty much it for this one. Now, I'm going to make sure to do more of these transfer updates um, most days, really, as, as, as time goes on. We've obviously got some crucial, crucial games, which is going to take uh, precedent over the next few weeks. City, home and away, Everton as well. Loads of interesting games. If we get past City, then the, it's not long before the semi-finals. That's only a couple of weeks later. So, huge, huge couple of months, potentially, for Liverpool. But... We all love transfers, it's what, uh, it's what I started my channel talking about basically back in May of 2017. Uh, the Naby Keita and Van Dijk sagas and there's Thomas Lamar who again was in the news recently so maybe we'll get some updates on him over the next few weeks. But yeah, leave a comment with your thoughts on Liverpool's current kind of transfer situation, who you want to see us target. And I'll be back for a preview of Palace Away, which is this weekend back after the international break. Uh, very excited to go to that game and see Liverpool hopefully get back to winning ways. Hopefully everyone comes back safe and sound from this current uh, round of fixtures. Obviously Joe Gomez limped off against uh, Holland the other night for England, so that was a concern, but everyone else seems to be okay. Hopefully they remain okay as we head into the weekend. Subscribe if you're new. As I said, um, Liverpool fans, obviously, so much to go to go on on this channel throughout the uh, rest of the spring and the summer. All the transfer updates will be here. I'll be here just talking in front of this camera uh, most evenings because that's uh, that's what we have to do as football fans. We have to talk about transfers and argue over who we'd rather sign and end up disappointed when we don't sign who we thought we would sign, as was the case at the end of last summer when I was furious that we didn't sign Van Dijk. Um, or any other centre-back, and then we didn't get Lamar. It was horrible, but hopefully this summer we'll have a Champions League trophy in our cabinet and uh, the ability to attract even better players than before, and then we'll go for a title push next season. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but that's the way we all want it to go. Um, as I say, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. It's Ben Might Say on all of those platforms, and I'll see you next time.